Nebraska fans, you probably know the permutations and calculations better than I do, but you're still alive inexplicably in the Big Ten Western Division with a record of three and four in the conference and five and five overall. Nebraska goes to Camp Randall Stadium to take on a disappointing Wisconsin team. We got Steve Merrill here from Wager Talk. WagerTalk.com is the place to be for Steve's complete work, NBA and NFL included. Steve, I got to tell you, I'm not watching Wisconsin and Northwestern last week, but I'm, while I'm watching everything else, you know, it's one of those deals where everyone was at halftime. I flipped to Wisconsin, Northwestern, see Wisconsin just put a touchdown on the board and think, oh, 24 10, maybe they got a chance in the fourth quarter. Oh, there's only 10 seconds left in the game. Wisconsin needed that much time to score one touchdown against Northwestern. That's how bad Wisconsin's been this year. Uh, and then Nebraska loses a game that they really need against Maryland at home. And uh, as you mentioned on another video, turned it over five times in that game. So we've got a couple ugly teams getting together. But again, as I mentioned off the top, Nebraska actually has a chance if Iowa loses this week to still win the Big Ten West at three and four in the conference. And they're a Four and a half point underdog at Wisconsin. Yeah, you have to go back to mid September to find the last time Nebraska had the turnover advantage in a game. It was against Louisiana Tech way back on September 23rd. They've been negative turnover differential in the last six games now. Um, and they've gone two and four ATS in those games, three and three straight up, remarkably, which is tough to do. And they had, of course, five last week. They've had now 12 turnovers the last three games, even though they beat Purdue with a four turnover outing a few weeks ago. Um, I liked Nebraska last week, and yes, if they don't turn the ball over five times, they win in cover, so I don't feel like I necessarily had the wrong side. It's very hard to predict turnovers. It's a very random occurrence, um, but it is a concern that they only scored 10 points against Maryland, who had given up 51 the week before against Penn State, and really looked like they were wearing out as the season progressed, um, and now you got Wisconsin, who is struggling offensively as well. 14 points or less in four of their last five games, 10 points or less in two of the last three. And they've gone under in all three of those. So it's a very low total for good reason. But my database simulation takes into account matchups. And with all that said, still has Wisconsin winning by over eight and a half points on average. We also have uncertainty at quarterback for Nebraska this week. Um, so at minus four and a half, the current line, I do think the value is Wisconsin in what should be another low scoring game. Got a uh, interesting note, Steve, that I enjoy because number one, it's more... Um... <laughs> ineptitude about the Big Ten Western Division. And number two, it's because I thought of it, and this is just kind of the way my mind works. Two weeks ago, Iowa, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Nebraska were in a four-way tie for first play in the place in the Big Ten West, all at three and two. Iowa's taking care of business, as they typically do. The other three have gone 0-6 these past two weekends. And not only have they gone 0-6 straight up, They've done it against teams that are 7-29 and 29 otherwise in the Big Ten. They've played horrible competition, and they still can't win. Right. You know, obviously any playoff game's a must-win, right? So we're not talking about those. But any regular season situation, we get this a lot in the NFL in December in the last three or four weeks. One of the most overrated adages in all of sports, especially sports betting, is to play on must-win teams. Because, first of all, if a team was good enough to win when they had to, they wouldn't be in a must-win situation. And the Big Ten West is an epitome of that, right? They're all mediocre 500 teams at best, and that's why they're all in must-win situations. And it just shows, and the thing is, Mark, you know, the betting markets often overprice these games for those reasons. And you mentioned how bad those teams have done. They've done even worse against the spread during that span. It's just something to keep in mind. Um, that same angle will apply with the NFL here in a few weeks when we hit December. Steve's under the radar selection, exclusive here at the Voice of College Football as a main channel member. Go over to the main channel, uh, get your membership. It's three bucks a month. Also on Patreon, you can do it there as well. Why would you want to do that? Well, Steve's uh, a mere 19 and five against the spread since week one of 2022 and uh, knocked it out for us again last week. Steve, thank you so much for stopping by as always. 